Hello, welcome to When Wagon Wheels Were Bigger, the podcast that's stretching neon lycra over its ridiculous perm. My name's Martin French. And I am an antichrist. I am an anarchist. I am Mark. And that's Mark. And uh, we are going to be listening to... Well, not going to be listening to... We're going to be watching another cartoon uh, this week uh, from the 80s and uh, from our childhood. More from your childhood, actually, this one, because um, I never really watched this as a kid. Uh, that is true. Um, did you say what it was? <laughs> no, I didn't. I was waiting for you to... I was letting oh, you lead into it because you know more about it than I do. It is uh, what we're looking at in this podcast is Mask. Mobile Mask. Armoured Strike Command. I hope already, it stands for. <laughs> already a spelling mistake straight away. Yes, but, uh, they spelled command but, with a K, which yeah, is not make it work. the correct way of spelling commands. But yeah, it was a really big part of my childhood. I mean, I, I was a huge fan of Mask. Mm. Um, I had a lot of the toys. had pretty much all the episodes on VHS cassette, which is like um, a fat download. Um, and it was uh, <laughs> it's just one of my <laughs> it's just one of my favourite shows. Um, this particular episode, which is is the first episode, although watching it, you be you know you you could think it wasn't because it just kind of starts. You just there's no like a lot of shows that we've watched actually. There's no real introduction mm. to the characters as such. Um, I quite like that though. I think that worked really well. Um, yeah, not lost at all. Uh, you know, it, it, you're introduced to everybody pretty handily. You know, you get well as we go through. We'll um, discuss the introductions, I suppose. But it's it, I, I felt it hold, held up really well. No, no, definitely it did. Um, I mean, this, what surprised me, well, I'm not sure if it surprised me or not actually watching it again. I remember this particular episode because, like I said, I had them on VHS cassette. And watching this back, I almost knew it word for word still because I watched really? it so often <laughs> as a kid. Um, oh, wow. I was kind of spouting off lines that uh, the character Cliff Dagger was saying and the Sly Rax. And I mean, I know the character. I mean, like I said, I was a huge fan of the show. Um, we'll play a little game. Uh, while it's not oh, on, good. you can yep. guess which of the toys I had. It's not a good game. Oh, okay. Well, the, of the the vehicles and characters that appear in this episode. Yeah. All right, that's a good game. I'll play that. Is it a good game? <laughs> well, I've got nothing better to do for the next half an hour, so I not don't really. mind playing that. But yeah, I, I mean, I I loved absolutely loved this show, and I think it has held up really well. Martin's just gone for a wee break, so here what I'm going to say just to you, the audience, that today's special word. It's going to be crab. If I can get Martin to say crab, nothing much will happen, but it'll be interesting for you, so listen out for that. But before we start, I have got one question. Go on. What's your favourite crustacean? <laughs> crab? Yeah! Well done. Well done. You'll find out at another point. Um, right, so if you want to... <laughs> I've, I've seen the episode and I'm really lost. So I don't know what you're talking about. You'll find out when you listen to this back. Right. <laughs> we will... Um, do, you want to, do you want to start okay. the episode? Uh, yeah, might as well. Okay. Uh, three, two, one. As is obligatory. Snuff. <laughs> um, yeah, the opening credits straight away. Very 80s holographic. Yeah, it's um, that grid reminded me of Transformers, but am I right or wrong? That there's a very similar grid in the Transformers opening. I think you're right. I'm not sure now. We haven't done Transformers. It made me yet. think of it straight away, and I know I saw a lot of that, but uh, yeah, <coughs> not much mass because I was a kid uh, when I was a kid. No, I mean straight away. Uh, before we even start the episode, I will say that the scrappy doos of the episode are Scott and T Bob. <laughs> uh, what um, I, I thought was interesting is the lyrics: "Working overtime, fighting crime." Are they getting paid overtime? Well, no. As well? even, I mean, Boulder Hill, their base operations, has a garage out the front, so I presume that's their normal hours. And then overtime is right. anything outside of uh, uh, you know, garage hours, fixing cars. Okay. <laughs> I really and presumably to... converting cars into planes or other yeah. things. I mean, the poor old lady who brings in an old Volkswagen Beetle and comes out with some sort of mobile armor strike command vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> and a, a mask that gives her special powers to carry a shopping home or something like that. Yeah, what surprised me about this, though, is with, um, considering it's the first episode, they obviously say the characters' names and code name. Uh, no, they, they say the vehicle code names, but they don't say the mask yeah. code names, because the masks like um, Matt Trackers is Spectrum, Bruce Sato's is Lifter, um, Alex 
beardy vet man, uh, pet store man, I mean, his is Jack Rabbit, but they didn't actually say... No, they didn't, no. This was in the 80s. I'm sure we moved on from cine cameras from the 80s. I'm sure they had at least standard eight cameras at this point. I didn't. I wondered if this was a little Marvel reference, as these sort of beekeeper science costumes are yellow in the glow of that light. They look a bit like AIM soldiers. It could well be. I thought the animation actually really is is really <coughs> smooth. Um, where you get a lot of uh, frame drop, or in other cartoons from the time, that you know everything seems to be really well animated in this. Yeah, this, this is the first um, first reveal of a Venom agent. This is Cliff Dagger with his improbable eye patch that doesn't really make a lot of sense. But he had no reason in the, this bit now. You've seen too much. And he, <laughs> he was You've hidden. You've seen nothing. Yeah, you and that camera, mister. That's missus. I remember all this. Is she married? Well, she must She's a be. professor. She would really say, that's professor. It would. And she escapes far too easily. Mm. Now, this is overkill for this professor, I think. <laughs> the amount of math. <laughs> it is a little agents. bit. And this is Sly Rax. Codename Piranha, his vehicle, Piranha. Did you have Piranha as a as a toy? No, but oh. I did have Sly Rex because you could buy the figures in like uh, pairs. Yes, like uh, Dino Riders would come in pairs, wouldn't they? Yeah, because they're the same size. And, and, um, yeah. and I had I had Sly Rex and I had Cliff Dagger, but I didn't have their vehicles, Piranha and Jackhammer, which I really wanted, and I still mm. now really want <laughs> watching. I the remember. Show really wanting the toys uh, I had one I had Condor which appears in this um, the motorbike this yeah. episode yeah the green motorbike with Brad Turner and, like and Hocus Pocus rotor blade in it um, but I know <laughs> that there was a there was a toy shop near where I lived well one of the places I lived and they had a big sort of glass display case like a sort of giant fish tank yeah. which was uh, which had a, a rhino display and lots of other yeah, vehicles and, rhino. and characters just, in it oh, just want to say that she went off that cliff into the water which, when she, her tyres were shut out, means she was heading for that ravine anyway. <laughs> she was. So what's her and, escape plan? Um, they say no one could survive that crash, but let's not check, just in case we're wrong. And also... And they were very wrong, because she's awake there. Yeah, yeah. In, but no bruises or anything. And also, Matt Tracker has changed her clothing. He's slightly creepy in this scene anyway. He's got that really slow, uh, sleepy voice that's um, of a sort of sexual predator. It, it yeah. comes across as a little unnerving. Also, he's, he's not only has he changed her clothes, but handily for her, she happens to have to tape in this jacket anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they put the right clothes on her. <laughs> Unless she had it under her um, hazmat suit, but that seems unlikely. And what kind Either of tape way, is she's been anyway? undressed. They had a cine camera, and they've brought out some sort of um, standard eight tape. I mean, is this set in the future? Is it a near future situation from, from the 80s? Or is it just any old stuff they could draw at the time? I think it's any old stuff they could draw. To go. I don't think it matters. <laughs> it's just very random. I mean, everything about it is... Why is he allowed to ride that in the house? <laughs> There's long corridors, it's fine. That's true. Turn it on, big lever to turn everything on. Scott's um, house rules, uh, or the rules of, of, of his father, are sort of very confusing and conflicting throughout the episode anyway. They are, really. I never liked Cliff Dagger as a character name. Just so I, I wonder what happened to his way. mum. Who's uh, Scott's? Scott's mum, yeah. Has she ever... No. Or was she ever mentioned when you were watching it when you were a kid? But they never mentioned mums in these shows. If you think about, like, Defenders of the Earth. Flash Gordon's kid, no mum. Lothar's kid, no mum. The Phantom's kid, no mum. Mandrake's... Dangerous lifestyle. Mandrake's slave boy, no mum. <laughs> <laughs> I forget their names. <laughs> <clears throat> This was always my favourite bit, who they were selecting, because then I could say if I had the characters or not. It's a little checklist for the children who want the toys, it isn't is. it? Do you want to have a guess now which ones I had? Uh, did you have that one? I had, I had, I had, I had him. <laughs> my lazy way of playing your I game. I had him, but not Rhinus, Bruce Sato, with his mask, Lifter. I like how they all just abandon everything they're doing, whatever they're doing. Yeah. Uh, his, what's his name? Uh, the one with Jack Rabbit, who just him. hands a snake to a, to Alex, a customer. <laughs> Alex something, I forget. <coughs> they did say it, then, here. Yeah. Hondo McLean. Um, sorry, I'm not playing your game. Did you have that one? I had the figure, but not the vehicle. It's fun, isn't the it? The vehicles. Yes, this is a good game. <laughs> I'm enjoying it. <laughs> I didn't have either of those. 
No. <coughs> oh, this pizza. Who's is he such making a the waste. pizza for? There's no one there. That kid? No. Well, oh, nobody. Oh, wait, oh, yeah, sorry. He is the other side of the counter, isn't he? Did you have that. Dusty uh, Hayes? No. What was that yeah, buddy was that thingy? One? Oh, I'm not sure which one's which now. That gator. And I'd like to think here that he dropped the petrol pump and it just kept just like petrol dripping out the end. And then the guy waiting in the car threw a cigarette <laughs> out. Boulder Hill was yep. demolished. Now, in, in the. Because um, there's no explanation as to why Venom and Mask exist or why they despise each other, but I had the comics no. as a kid and. Okay. My recollection. Because, you know, just to fit in with the whole no research thing, my recollection <laughs> is that Miles Mayhem, who was the leader of Venom and Matt Tracker, the leader of Mask, Mask, I'm doing it. Mask. Yeah. <laughs> it's easy to do. Um, it is. That they kind of co founded these this technology and then kind of one went evil, one went good. I'm not I'm not sure the logistics of the situation as to why that happened now. No, but <clears throat> I suppose it makes sense because they've both got the so the same technology, haven't they? So it's, yeah. one's just used it to make evil. Well I don't know, the masks all do sort of similar things, don't they? Or do they? I don't know. You're the no. expert on this one. I've, uh, really, I've never really watched much more than this. Cliff Daggers is a th uh, flamethrower. I think it's just called Torch. Uh, Myers Mayhem's is spits acid. Does it? But I forget what the mask is called. But I did have uh, Miles Mayhem acid and acid spitter. Acid uh, <laughs> spitter. <laughs> I did have Miles Mayhem and the uh, vehicle switchblade, which was awesome. Uh, oh, did you, do you have that? What is that? The the, the chopper that turns yeah. into a jet. That was yeah, the first one I got. Cool, that one. <clears throat> I got it one Christmas, and then for my birthday, not long after, I got Matt Tracker's car, Thunderhawk. Oh, see, that's a cool with him car. in that outfit with Spectrum, which was cool. That's the red car that he he flies. Yeah, or, improbably, or in it, 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 on, you know, yeah. it doesn't make much sense how it would fly. This this is over engineered. This whole base. It is. <laughs> And all those buttons are very samey. He'd feel that he would sometimes that the meeting might just go up when he meant to just access the radiation tracking satellite. Yeah. Which is a thing he has. <laughs> Which is a thing he has and doesn't show up any power stations or anything. Just this meteorite. That's all it can really track. Now, um, one Just of handy. these one of these masks on on the Energizer or whatever it's called has the name Penetrator. What <laughs> what power do you think that mask has? <laughs> It's not utilised in this episode. Um, uh, is it some kind of drill? <clears throat> no. <laughs> is, it, it is. is it? <laughs> <clears throat> is it? A, is it for pleasure? <laughs> Depends on what you find pleasurable. It uh, <laughs> allows him to change his density, so he can walk through walls. Oh, I suppose that's that sort of makes sense. Yeah. As a name. It does. <laughs> Still a bit. Still a little ah, bit. You know, Matt, risky. I am a stereotype with <laughs> proverb. <Yeah. laughs> this is racist. This is really racist. I can't but understand the damn word he's saying. <laughs> <laughs> if he talks in riddles, I think that would drive you mad in a tight spot. I mean, Matt's quite happy with it there, but if, if you really need to get information out of him quickly and he just tells you some kind of riddle, uh, I don't think he'd be on the team very long. To be fair, Matt's not too bothered when anything happens, even later on when Scott <laughs> no. goes missing. Scott's missing. It's probably a way off his mind, to be honest. He's very, very sleepy delivery. I can't remember what that mask's called. Trouble is, they don't say... In later episodes, they say things like Spectrum on, and the, the mask will do its thing. Yeah. But, yeah, I don't think any of them say anything. Everyone, transform your vehicles as soon as possible to showcase what cool toys we have. They are. Well, yeah, because they all do transform, don't they? That was, yeah, that was the cool toy. Switchblade was amazing. I was so happy that Christmas that is a, morning that is when I got a cool that. toy. Yeah. It's just a shame I had none of the others to go with it at the time. No, but that's still... Did it, did it come with just the one figure then, each figure? Yeah, just, yeah, just Miles Mayhem. But it was exactly... What was great about the toys was it, how they looked on the show is exactly how the toys were. So mm. you know, like with Transformers, they, they never were like they were in the show, obviously. No, not at all. These were exactly like they were in the show. So if something popped out, you know, like the rotors or the guns, it did exactly the same in the toy. It just feels <coughs> like a very polished product. It's like we, we here are the toys. We have to showcase them. You know, we've got we've got some good animation studios on the case, and it's it's purpose made yeah. to show the toys. Whereas Transformers was just a lot of the toys were any old crap, really, weren't they? Just yeah, shoved they into the toy line. That's that's the worst heat-seeking missile ever. Why would it lock onto a hologram? It wouldn't. Couldn't work that out. 
It wouldn't. This is scientifically inaccurate at best. Mm. <laughs> I like that um, uh, Scott and T-Bob have very little faith in one another because he says something there like, uh, oh, uh, you're making sense for once or uh, something. And then later on, Scott says about T-Bob's tracking system working for once. So not yeah. much not much uh, faith shown. Look at him, he's just or... smashing this guy into rocks. <laughs> I know, that's quite funny though. And how's he dr- how is Cliff Dagger driving Jack Hammer from that top deck? Because he seems to be concentrating on the guns. Does it have two? Hate some it. of these vehicles have two people in them. This thing is tire with these spikes in it. <laughs> what did he call it? Switchblade do your stuff or something? <laughs> something like that. And it did nothing. If if doing its stuff <laughs> is doing nothing, mission accomplished. <laughs> <laughs> and how did this? Another thing here. He fires his cannon at Jack Hammer, and it somehow manages to stop him from running Scott over. It's the stop cannon. Ah, I didn't hear him properly. <laughs> I don't know what, it is. what was really weird in the figures as well was um, should have let Scott die. How did he know that was going to happen as well? Was that you just <laughs> he jumped on him <laughs> the um, The weird thing about the figures was that Cliff Dagger was a hell of a lot shorter than the other ones and stumpy, well, like properly noticeably shorter, like about a centimetre. Which considered they were only I don't know they weren't very big. They weren't very big. Um, it was noticeably different. Hmm. Oh no, Hondo's dead. Is he... <laughs> Again, they take it all in their stride, really. Yeah. I suspect Bruce has got some sort of Confucius say proverb. <laughs> Confucius say, when Hondo die, nobody care. <laughs> when Hondo die, we need meteorites to bring him back to life. <laughs> Scott oh. looks a little bit like uh, Aaron Paul from Breaking Bad in he that does, shot. bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Is Hondo dead? I know he gets... Well, I won't spoil it, what happens to him later, but is he dead there? I've already spoiled it, because I said they need the meteorite. <laughs> oh, you did, yeah. Uh, but So was he supposed to be dead or just badly hurt? I think he's just badly hurt. Anyway, spoiler, he's alive again by the end of the episode, whether he's dead or not. He's so. alive again, so you can buy his toy and not have to worry about uh, having a corpse in your toy collection. No, and I did have the toy, no Hondo McLean. <laughs> but I did not have Firecracker. Are these like Viper... Drones, not Viper, that's something else. Venom. Venom drones with Miles Mayhem? Because I don't ever remember seeing them in any other episode. I don't know. I say I'm, I've never really <coughs> watched it until until earlier today when I watched this episode. It is good though. Excuse me, they would have just shot him or kicked him in the sea, <laughs> wouldn't they? You could buy T Bob and Scott as well, thankfully, I never had them. <laughs> Just um, again, the, the, you talk about sort of Matt's sleepy delivery, but Scott, the the kid who's playing Scott, sounds a bit drunk. Yeah, then, this yeah. Hello, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. How are you? <laughs> Small talk time. Really you know, got... fucking worried with you, being, you stupid boy. <laughs> but to be fair, Scott does save the day. I mean, this again, spoilers from the end of the episode. Yeah, Scott. I mean, does there's save a little Anakin Skywalker moment here where he just somehow accidentally flies the thing but he's got no seatbelt or restraints on so no. he should die in a couple of minutes when this thing goes upside down on a pier I was kind of hoping they're just going to rip T-Bob in half <laughs> <laughs> oh, I bet he's evil, look, black hat look, look at that he's, he's no seatbelt, <clears throat> he's dead that kid in there. Yeah. so that's not his vehicle then that's not actually Viper Viper? Switchblade Oh, sweet, well, what? Okay, Vi- Viper's switch nothing. Viper was a mistake I made earlier. <laughs> oh, okay. Yes, no, Switchblade. Yeah, that's Miles Mayhem's bit. Switchblade. Just I paid no attention to you or the episode. No, I'm, I'm a little bit hurt. I think the oh, makers uh, of Mask, Dick, will be a little bit hurt as well. <laughs> <coughs> no, There's always a highlight at the end of an episode where you know the, the... Dick! <laughs> oh, this is Dick. I had Condor. This one here, he didn't do this. Yeah. Also, there's no, no um, like in like, your mind it could do it. It's what, sorry? In your mind it could do it. In my mind it could do all manner of things. It's again, there's no surprise cutbacks. <laughs> <laughs> again, there's no consistency throughout the show no. of what each vehicle mask can do. No, not really. Oh, he's so mad. Why would he wear the mask all the time? Surely that would be dangerous driving because he'd have no real peripheral vision. <laughs> 
Well, how do they work? Do they have um, like some kind of heads-up display inside? I don't know. And this as well. You can just <laughs> throw through <laughs> magic portal. It doesn't matter because <laughs> he's the juggernaut, bitch. <laughs> Oh yeah, it does. His helmet is a little bit like that as well. Right. Or his mask, or his helmet. Let's get it right. Don't know what helmet would stand for. He's all yours, Bruce. No, I don't <laughs> know. <good. either. laughs> oh, I thought you were going to come up with one. I was thinking. Huge, elongated <laughs> length of. That's not included. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Elephantitis. Engorged. Dodger. <laughs> There you go. <coughs> oh, kind of went That's somewhere. That's a different show. <laughs> yeah, it did. It went exactly the direction I thought it would go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, ladies, which way did he oh, go? Some sexy beach ladies. Hey, I'm interested again. <sighs> also, it's handy that he followed Sly Rax, considering they're both the only ones with um, water-faring vessels. <laughs> it's a good showcase, though, for all the uh, all the toys again, isn't it? The um, it is. You know, this the, the boat popping out of the car. You get, a, you get a lot of stuff in this episode. What, what we missed earlier was also Slyrax's laugh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I did pick that up as well, yeah. When I say freeze, I mean freeze. I don't need the sound up, I know what they're saying. <laughs> but that, again, the, that freeze ray sound effect is another ubiquitous sound from a lot of cartoons of the time. I think it it's is. used in He Man quite a lot. It sounds like the transformation sound from the. Um, from yeah. When he, he makes Cringer into Battle Cat, I might be wrong. It is another case, though, of um, they have the powers and weapons that they need for this particular uh, adventure. This is why they're, they're, you know, they're good at what they do. They are good at what they do. There's a, there's a, there was a point there to show you how the steering wheel works to fly the vehicle because you pushed it in like you would aeroplane controls. Hmm. That's a good detail, though, for you know, because that's something that a lot of kids wouldn't even care about. No, because when I was they've, watching they've it again, it. I was looking at things like that, thinking that this is improbable. My it's car really doesn't good. do this, like, but then my I'm, doors don't open like a DeLorean, I guess, so... Well, you know, it is quite dangerous to just fall out of that one. Again, this, I'm um, not sure exactly what this does, the rocket. It seems to kind of... I was going to ask you what was supposed to have happened there. Is it just that the rocket is now propelling the, the jet? Yeah, but it's not... They've not animated in such a way that makes it look like it's doing anything. It just looks like he's lost control. Right. But yeah, my assumption is that it made it kind of propel really fast. That's, that's all I can think. There's Boulder Hill again. There is an episode where they, um, Venom kind of turn up at Boulder Hill, but they don't know that's the mask headquarters. Oh, really? It's like a, almost like a comedy episode. Yeah, it's like on a foggy day or something, if I remember rightly. I wish Brad Turner would take his um, sunglasses off him the inside. It's just rude, isn't it? Then Matt said something like, I'll never find that seaplane, but you've got a satellite that tracks radiation, so if you really wanted to, you could, you know, if you didn't know that, that you know, your son had found that, you could have gone looking for that. There was a cut scene where Brad Turner says, but we've got that radiation track set I said, we'll never find that seaplane. <laughs> I am bored of this mission. <laughs> Look, I'm a multi-millionaire, I don't have to do this, you know. <laughs> I'm basically Batman. <laughs> he is. But with a gang. A gang of Batman. <laughs> the Batman gang. Well, Batman has a gang, really, doesn't he? But it's all of children, and it's, um, it's uh, yeah, it's a social services nightmare. This is, this is, yeah, a bit more ethnically diverse as well. Yes. Has Matt Tracker not got any other shirts, or is this the same day? If it's the same day, it's fine. <laughs> Probably the same day. I suppose she's wearing the same, but then I don't know how many women's clothes Does... he has. Depends about his, how much his dead wife left behind. <laughs> <laughs> Does the sexy professor turn into one of the uh, the mask gang? No, there is a female mask gang member. <laughs> if that, yeah, Gloria something. She's in the opening credits with the gold. She's right at the front actually when they kind of all the mask members come up. Okay, I'll watch that again. Victory will be mine. And of course, here's lesson the time. here's the lesson time. Oh. Which is great, because again, uh, you know, the confusing house rules. Don't run into the road, but do stow away on dangerous missions and fly strange helicopter jets and get drunk as well while you're doing it. Yeah, no, that's right. All that's fine, but don't run after your ball. It's perfectly acceptable. When you run after a ball... <laughs> well, when you run after a ball, <laughs> look both ways. There was a line you said earlier, Matt Trick, I don't know whether to hug you or spank you, and that's what's going <laughs> to yeah. happen in that next scene. <laughs> he's uh, he's going to hug him and spank him and confuse him for life. That was really good, though. I, you know, that animation, like I say, holds up nicely. I, I think uh, that is probably 
one of the best quality cartoons we've watched so far mm. as part of this podcast. That, that's, um, you know, it's obviously, you see all the Japanese animator names coming up in a minute <laughs> yeah. on the end credits. It's and so uh, well. it shows, but they've, they've gone to a good <clears throat> studio to actually animate this. Yeah, no, it's a um, good show. I mean, like I said, it was. I mean, I liked a lot of cartoons when I was a kid, but I think it's probably somewhere between this and Transformers my favourite. Maybe this just slightly wings it. I think, I mean, I know we'll probably go into that in a minute, but I think I would I would happily watch more of that. That was, uh, that was quite watchable. Yeah. Um, dick. Ah, uh, dick. <laughs> um, like a penis. Yeah, that's what made me laugh. Yeah, oh, 1985, that's... Uh, I was that's six. held up really well. Six years old I was. In the next episode, Scott dies, but then he's brought back to life by aliens. Is that true? Correct. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Uh, I'm it's, sorry, I... <laughs> it's, come up on, it's come up next to it, uh, the Star Chariot. I think that's the episode anyway. They find some sort of alien life or something, and they think he's dead, but Matt kind of... Again, kind of shrugs it off as if so. <laughs> well, the mum's dead. I was going to ask. So What's his reaction like? Him. Now he's with his mother. But Bruce, uh, but Matt, we can find him. <laughs> I said he's with his mother. <laughs> I'll do anything to get out of this. Matt, when son dies, you must shut up. <laughs> Just shut up, Bruce. <laughs> Go back to making toys or whatever it is you do. <laughs> I'm sure in later episodes they make more of a thing about what they're running away from. Well, not running away from, but what they're um, leaving to to join the mission. Oh, like the you mean like when you see the day jobs? Yeah, because I know that yeah. Alex, Alex is like a he runs a pet store. Bruce seems to be some sort of toy inventor or manufacturer. Uh, Dusty is one of or them. Buddy, I forget which is which. One of them's works at the garage, so he's really handy. And one's Boulder Hill. Uh, one's uh, pizza parlor, rather. One of them was a teacher, wasn't he? It looked like Hondo. he was in a classroom. Yeah, Honda McLean was just, a teacher. He just gets up and leaves, which is really irresponsible. It's the, it's the American schooling system. It's just... <laughs> well, it makes sense. Just all over the place. I mean, in the 80s, if you ever watched Degrassi Junior High, you'd know that <laughs> schooling wasn't great. <laughs> no one watched that. No one over here watched that, <laughs> apart from me. It, my... My knowledge of America, the American school system from watching any 80s uh, TV shows is that basically bells ring randomly in the middle of class and people aren't ready for it and they just get up and leave. Yeah. That always seems to happen. Like when over here, oh God, maybe we all knew. We all cl- watched the clock. I knew when a lesson was going to win. I was ready to go before. Oh, definitely. You know, like 10 minutes before. If it was man, um, so I was ready to go as soon as I got in there. As soon as you're in there. <laughs> Ah, so yeah, so I mean, obviously you you watched that as a lot as a kid, and you said you you could have recited that as you watched it. Yeah, I now. really could. <laughs> there are quite a few episodes I could have recited. There's one, I forget what the episode's called, but there's one where Venom somehow get hold of these metal eating bugs. I think they might be artificially produced, or whatever. Mm. Um, but no, that one as well. I can still this line. I can visualize virtually the whole episode because I'd watched them. I used to get them. Mask toys and videos, like for a couple of years, um, Christmas, birthday, and maybe Easter rather than Easter eggs, or if I saved up pocket money or whatever, and I'd buy buy video cassettes. And I just used to watch them, just oh god, over and over and over again. I mean, mm. but that was that was I think because we've touched on it quite a few times now about how there weren't really that many uh, kid shows on. Uh, for us over here, you know, two channels really showing kid shows at yeah. very certain times of the day. So you would watch videos over and over again. Um, yeah. I did the same. I had all the Asterix videos, which I was obsessed with as well. I used to watch them over and over again. We watched them not long ago. And again, I knew all the words. I was, <laughs> I was speaking, and that's like an hour. I was speaking along with it. you know. And you just think, God, I really should have got outside more. I could probably do that. I think for me, that was real Ghostbusters was what I had most yeah. sort of videos of and, and toys. And See, I was a fan of that, but never never to this extent because I only had a few of the figures mm-hmm. of Ghostbusters. I mean, I was never really kind of one toy line more than another. Um, no. But if I guess counting them up in my head now, I guess it was probably Mask and Transformers were the ones I had the most of. I had a lot of G.I. Well, they weren't called G.I. Joe. It was Action Force, but I had a lot of those as well. Mm. Uh, basically, the genius really of... spoil. I had a lot. <laughs> So was I. It's, it's quite quite worrying to think back God. how many cartoons. Youngest and toys. children. Woo! 
in your face, yeah, sibling. Youngest of four. To, to our siblings who may be listening, one in particular, in your face. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, the, the genius of the mask toys is probably the scale, isn't it? Because the figures were, what would you say, they're probably a couple of inches, maybe tall. Do you know, I'm terrible um, at that, but that ruler in front of me, I really can't do <laughs> sizes. Well, well, but uh, they're quite small. They're, they were smaller than uh, the Action hmm, Force, G.I. Joe kind of How can I measure two inches way. without a ruler? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Hang on, I'll, I'll, I'll by leave 10. you to do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, but yeah, so because the figures were so small, um, and that so the vehicles are sort of manageable and I guess slightly more affordable. Maybe not now they wouldn't uh, be. But I have no idea how much they were, but there is. But um, I, I suppose a toy car for for one of the the mask figures wouldn't be that much bigger than a transformer, you know, a decent sized transformer. So that, no, that evened not, out the not, vehicles a, a little bit. Yeah, not really. I suppose I suppose they're probably around ten pounds each, maybe. Hmm. Maybe hmm. I'm not sure. But it, it, yeah, I mean, I loved I loved those toys, and like I said, when I had Switchblade that Christmas, so exciting putting the stickers on it and everything, and then yeah, Thunderhawk, and I got Condor, and I got uh, some that weren't in this. I don't think they're in it until late, a lot later on. There were two, uh, one called I want to say it was called Firefly, but it had like an Italian driver, Mario Lopez or something. <laughs> That's the guy from Saved by the Bell. <laughs> Maybe not that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. That's AC I'm sure Slater, that is later from Save yeah, by the Bell. Yeah, AC Slater was in it, um, and I also had the vampire, the which was driven by Mr. Belding. It was great. I like the crossover element of it. That's good. Yeah, when you're saved by mess. <laughs> what did Screech drive? <laughs> um, the bus home. <laughs> I was going to make a reference to his pooey porn, but, <laughs> but I couldn't think of anything. Oh, uh, I, I could have given you a lead in there, but we'll just leave it. I think. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, the uh, so, who did you have a favourite character though, or have you already mentioned it? And I maybe tuned it out. No, I think um, <laughs> I think my favourite character was probably uh, Matt Tracker with Thunderhawk. Mm, it's a it's a cool car. It's, it uh, is. It's a cool toy, I bet as well. Um, but my favourite my favourite toy would have been Switchblade. Yeah. Definitely, because that was. Just... They're all really cool. They all look. Uh, you could give any of those toys from from memory, anyway, from what I remember, have seen them. You can give any of those toys to a kid now, and they'd be quite happy with it. I think. Oh, definitely, yeah, definitely. It was. Um, yeah, it's a really, really good show. That's really held up. I, mean, I think, like I said, it's the. Uh, I think it's the only one that has actually held up so far. Le- it, legitimately, it kept my interest. Le- yeah, it, and and it looks good. It, it's smooth. This, you know, the voice acting's a little bit strange at times and a little bit and there's some stereotypical um, accents and characters but mm. at least like you say they, they attempted to be multicultural <laughs> there is some variety in the characters yeah um, and yeah it's it looks good uh, I would I would quite happily watch that again uh, is it one that you've shared with your boys because you've uh, you know you've had the videos but obviously they um, probably wouldn't wouldn't I watch think, videos now but I think I have yeah I, I, mm. not recently but it is. It's one they would definitely enjoy. I mm. say that. Especially yeah. if you, because what happened to your toys? Did they get handed down? Or they, did they got handed down to my kept? nephews, I think. When I was, mm. when I came of age, when toys no longer held any meaning. Those um, few years in between you thinking you had outgrown toys and then remembering that you liked toys again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, a mask. is another one that I think um, I would be surprised to not see rebooted or relaunched at some point. I'm surprised it hasn't been. It'd make a great film. There's, well, there's a great, a great sort of. Um, there's a lot of scope there for is. for making those toys, think, and um, you know the story sort of works. I think if Michael Bay is listening. Maybe mm, no. you know, maybe you could do a better job of this than you did Transformers and Turtles, and actually, you know, I don't think he's the man for the job, actually. <laughs> but he could but, be. Uh, this could be where he proves himself to all the nerds be. of the eighties. He could turn it around for himself. <laughs> Come on, Michael. I think anybody who who tackled it would get told that they were ruining somebody's childhood anyway, because that's just what happens with people of our age who. Uh, who spent far too much time indoors I mean, have this weird ownership problem with things <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they, they don't want to see uh, other people enjoy new versions of it they just want I mean, exactly what they saw just give us exactly the same cartoon we watched that we can recite again and again 
we could we have, watched all the videos. <laughs> you could use all these regular cast. I mean, Mark Wahlberg could be Mac Tracker. You could have Megan Fox mm-hmm. as the professor. You could yep. have uh, Shia LaBeouf as Scott. Um, mm. John Turturro as Miles Mayhem. You see, it's, it's all... This is working. It's That's working very me. good. I mean, John Turturro sounds... has to put on about 10 stone, maybe, to be Miles Mayhem. <laughs> but, hey, you know... They, they they definitely fit better than they or they seem that they would fit better than they did in the Transformers movies anyway. <laughs> so in conclusion, good show, watch it. But you know, thumbs up. Thumbs up, <laughs> two thumbs up from me. No, oh, yeah, I, I I think I would happily recommend that to um to anybody now if they wanted to if they wanted to relive or, you know, in if they wanted something that they watched as a kid and they you know, to see it again, I would say yeah, watch it because it does Probably is probably doing exactly what you remember that it did. Yeah, so watch it. Yeah, yeah. everybody watch it now. Everybody. Or if you've watched this on the YouTube channel, um, good job at watching it. And if you're watching this on the YouTube channel, subscribe to our YouTube channel. <laughs> and uh, also subscribe to us on iTunes because uh, it's, I don't know, apparently a good thing. I don't know what it does for us, we but everybody else seems to say that on the end of their podcasts. <laughs> so. subscribe. This is a subliminal message now. Subscribe. <laughs> Apart from it's not very similar. All right, so is that uh, is that us wrapping up this one? Yeah, I'm done. Oh, all right, me too. <laughs> well, yeah, that was. Uh, I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised by that one. Uh, it can only go downhill from here now because I'm sure nothing else will be as good as that. It really won't. Um, but uh, yeah, so you can uh, find us on Twitter if you follow at Spread the Whimsy. That's our shared uh, Twitter account. There's nothing weird about it. It's fine. Two men can share an account if they want to. It's not like sharing uh, a needle. It's not like. That. <laughs> Um, and we're also uh, we contribute occasionally to the uh, website Fountain of Geek as well. So uh, uh, go over there and have a look at uh, articles and um, other geeky stuff that's uh, that's hosted on that site. And uh, also uh, we have a Facebook page, which is facebook.com forward slash too much dot jam, which has you know links to our videos of these uh, podcasts. It's also got some other stuff we've done where we've manipulated celebrities in hilarious adverts. Hmm. So there you go. So there's lots of you to look at in the uh, in the next week or so until the next episode. Uh, so I hope you'll come back and listen to to that uh, next week. Thank you very much, Tatty Bogle. All right, take care then. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs>